Hey everyone, welcome back. Standardized tests like the SAT and the ACT are formulaic. The right answers are right for a reason, but the wrong answers are also wrong for a reason. Even if you can't always spot the right answer, you can often still get the question right, as long as you could eliminate what choices are not right. And this is where it helps to be able to spot wrong answer traps. These traps follow a certain pattern and will appear on every SAT and ACT. In video 15, here, I talked about some of the most popular math and grammar traps that will appear on each test. Be sure to check it out. But now let's talk about some of the most common reading traps that you'll see on each exam. Again, you don't even need to know which answer is right. Sometimes it's enough just to knock out which choices are wrong. So let's talk about how to spot these traps. If you find this video helpful, please hit the like button, share, and subscribe. As always, I thank you for your support. Okay, reading traps of the SAT and ACT. Here we go. In previous videos, I've talked about the strategies you can use for the reading sections on each test. This has included the format of the passages and how they're similar between the tests and how they're different between the tests. That led to the step-by-step -step strategy of what to do for the reading sections on each test. That includes that age-old question, should you look at the passages first or should you look at the questions first? Well, it depends. Likewise, we talked about the order in which to answer the questions. There's no reason to do the questions in order. Especially on the SAT, there's a better way to move around. Likewise, no reason to do the passages in order either. I cover all of these topics and more in previous videos. In particular, I suggest that you watch video 13 here before you watch this video. It covers all of the points that I just outlined in much more detail. But there's one point from that video that I'll reiterate here using your hand to cover the answers to predict your own answer. In other words, after you read a question, don't look at the answers just yet. Try to think of your own answer first before you look at the choices. And to do that, I suggest that my students use their hand to cover the answers. This forces you to predict your own answer before you look. Some students feel like this slows them down, but they soon see how much this step helps them avoid wrong answers that the test wants them to see. This might include an answer where only half of a statement is true, or another answer where they include true information, but from somewhere else in the passage. These choices can be tempting because you see phrases that recap info from the passage, but if you can come up with your own prediction, you're far less likely to be tempted by these choices. Now, you can't predict on every question. Some of the questions use language like this. Which choice provides the best evidence for the previous question? Which of the following happened first chronologically? and all of the following are supported by the passage except. For questions like these, then of course, you have to look at the answers first. But for the other questions, stay diligent about predicting before you look. It will help you avoid wrong answer traps. And now let's get into what those traps are. Both tests contain what are called vocab and context questions. These are the questions where they ask how a word is being used in a specific sentence. Let's look at one. And again, you always want to predict before you look, so I won't show you the answers just yet. Chekhov made sure that all elements of tragedy were used in concert with hints of comedy. In line 31, the word concert most nearly means, I'll give you a minute to predict an answer. Press pause and think about how the word concert is being used in this sentence. When they say tragedy was used in concert with comedy, they mean together or at the same time. So if we have that as a prediction, you could now look at the choices. Press pause, give it a shot. The best choice here is balance or J. And let's prove it. I'll read that word back into the sentence so you could hear it in context. Chekhov made sure that all elements of tragedy were used in balance with hints of comedy. And that makes sense. The answer is J. But notice answer choice F, musical performance. That's the literal definition, like going to a concert. And that's the point of the vocab and context questions. They will always list the most common or the most literal definition of the word. And I don't like the word never, but I'm gonna say that those are rarely the correct answer. Let's try another. And again, let's not look at the answers just yet. I'm not sure if I agree, but let me entertain that thought for a moment. In line 42, the word entertain most nearly means Press pause and try to predict your own answer. 
So when they say, let me entertain that thought, they mean, let me think about it, or let me ponder it, or something like that. So now that we have a prediction, you could look. Press pause, give it a shot. The best answer here is B, consider. And let's read it back in so we could hear that. I'm not sure if I agree, but let me consider that thought for a moment. Notice how the other choices here, though, could be taken as other definitions of the word entertain if you took them in a different context, and that's how they're trying to trap you. So for the vocab and context questions, avoid the comma definition. I won't say never, but I'll say it's rarely the answer. Also, read your answer back into the sentence, which I did for each of the sentences before. If you have a little trouble predicting an answer, taking the words and reading them back in really helps you hear it. And finally, jump to these questions if you're running short on time. So if you only have a few minutes left and half a passage to go, or more, these are very good questions to knock out very quickly. Another common answer trap is when they give you true information that can be found in the passage, but it doesn't answer the question. So maybe they're asking about something from paragraph 5, but then an answer will list something that happened in paragraph 3. This is especially true on the ACT, where certain answers will reproduce certain portions of the text, word for word, exactly the way that they appeared in the passage. Even though an answer choice might give you a verbatim phrase from the passage, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's answering the question. Now, this is also very popular on the paired passages. The paired passages are when they give you two smaller passages written by two different authors, but on the same topic. And the reason it's so popular here is that they like to mix up the opinions of the authors. In other words, they'll ask how did author number two feel, but then they'll tell you how number one felt, or vice versa. In previous videos, we talked about a strategy to help you avoid this. For the paired passages, don't read the passages back to back in the order that they appear. Instead, you want to read passage one, and then after passage one, right away, answer the questions that deal with passage one. Then read passage two, answer the passage two questions, and then answer the questions that deal with both. That's far better than reading the passages back to back as they appear. Why? Well, let's think about this answer trap. Let's say that you read passage one, and then you look at a passage one question that says, how did author one feel? You can bet that a wrong answer trap will tell you how author two felt. But if you haven't read passage two yet, you're not gonna be tempted by that because you don't know how author two feels yet. Who cares how author two feels? It doesn't matter. So treating each passage like its own little separate part helps you avoid this trap. So, make sure the choice that you pick answers exactly what they're asking. Even if the answer you see contains information that can be found somewhere else in the passage, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's the correct answer. Another common trap is when they give a choice that only has partially correct information. So, for example, let's pretend that the author was saying something like, Billy didn't like to play baseball when it was too hot outside. There might be an answer that says, Billy didn't like to play baseball because it made his feet hurt. I don't know, something like that. But you get the point. That first half of the statement was correct, but then the reason for it is wrong. Be careful of answer choices where only a portion of the statement is correct. And this brings up an important tip. Make sure to read all of the answer choices. You might think that you found the answer in A or B, but then you find a better one in C or D. So, make sure to read all of the choices. It helps you avoid choices that are only partially correct. This next trap is related to the last one. Sometimes an answer is just too extreme. So, to go back to the baseball example, let's say that the passage was saying, sometimes Billy liked to play baseball on his day off. An answer might say, Billy loved to play baseball whenever he could get a chance, or Billy thought baseball was the most amazing thing in the world. You get the idea. They're going too far. This also includes when they could be too broad with the language or too specific. So, just because an answer follows the same general tone of what the author's saying doesn't necessarily make it correct. Be careful when they go too far with the language. And finally, look out for opposite traps, which are exactly what they sound like. So if the author says, Billy likes baseball, there might be an answer that says, Billy does not like baseball. In a certain sense, these are the easiest to spot. Still, be careful with the language. It might just be one word that throws off the answer. For example, if they throw in the word not, or if they say something like, all of the following are true except. 
But for the most part, this trap is fairly straightforward. So don't psych yourself out of this. If they say the sky is blue, there might be a choice that says the sky is not blue. You can eliminate it. So just to recap, always try to predict your own answer before you look at the choices. It will help you avoid traps that they want you to see. For the vocab and context questions, avoid the common definition of the word. And if you're stuck on these, take the words and read them back into the sentence. It'll help you hear it more clearly. And also, if you're short on time, jump to these questions. Also be careful when they give you information that might be true, but it doesn't answer the question. So just because it could be found somewhere else in the passage doesn't make it the answer. This is especially popular on the paired passages when they mix up the authors. Also, avoid an answer that's only partially correct. If half of a statement is correct, but the other half is not, you can knock it out. Likewise, avoid language that's too extreme, too specific, or too broad. And finally, look out for words like not and accept and opposite traps. As you work on your practice sections, see how many of these traps you start to notice. Stay diligent about predicting and you'll be able to zone in on the right answer much more quickly. Thanks for watching. And remember, plan your work, work your plan. Mm -hmm.